Hello. Do you want to know how to set the shot volume for your injection molding process? Well, in this video, I'm going to run through a procedure on how to set your shot volume correctly for your molding process. So let's get into a few slides here where we look at a few, uh, one or two different ways to set up this. Uh, crucial volume that you're going to inject into the mold. Now, with traditional kind of injection molding, what we want to do is fill the mold that is about 95, 98% full, and then switch over to a lower holding pressure just to pack out the mold and um, compensate for any shrinkage that may be going on for, of the plastic as it cools down. So this switch over position is important to get right and the actual amount of plastic we inject into the mold so that it's like I say 95 or 98% full. So here I have a procedure, one way of doing it. Um, I'm not saying it's the best way, but it, it is one way of doing it. Um, perhaps not the most accurate, but it's one way. So what we can do here is first remove the packing pressure. That's the second stage holding or packing pressure once we switch over. So we remove that, either set the pressure to zero and the time to zero. So we have no second stage pressure whatsoever. Then we fill the most full cavity so that sinks are just about visible. So the most full cavity, if you have a multi-cavity tool, you may have some imbalance and some cavities will fill before others. So this most full cavity, we want that to be either very slightly short or to show sink, some sink marks in it. And at that position then, it's a visual looking at the part as such. At that position, um, once we can see our most full part with a slight sink mark in it, we're going to call that 98% full or so. Okay, so then we're going to weigh this shot with the runners. So we're going to get a weighing scales, put that shot onto the weighing scales and weigh it and record that. Now that weight, we multiply it by 0.99, which is 1%. And we find what's known as the fill only shot. Find the weight of that. So that's the fill only shot weight. So once we have found that weight, we then adjust the plasticizing stroke or the shot size so that we're able to mold parts at that shot weight. So parts and runners were able to mold them at that weight. Now let's just put a, a few figures on that. If we, okay, first we remove the pack pressure, put it at zero. Um, next we fill to, that the most cavity is full. Okay, 98%. If there's a little sink in that, first the fill part. Then we're going to weigh that shot. Let's just say it's 10 grams for argument's sake. We multiply it by 0 0.099, which is 1%. Uh, we multiply it by and reduce it by 1% essentially. So that's 9.9 .9 of a gram. Uh, so we're going to use that 9.9 .9 gram as our fill only shot weight. Now we need to adjust the plasticizing stroke, maybe reduce it by um, a fraction of a millimeter so that we're able to mold parts at that 9.9 .9 gram. And we're calling that the fill only shot weight. Now that's one way of doing it, but I have, and I, I think it's, it, it, it's a good way if you're in a hurry and you, you need to find the, the switch over weight and the switch over position um, it's good if you if you're in a hurry now I, I suppose I have two, two two issues with this one would be 
this one percent reduction in the weight and that is as i understand is just taking account that we're put, taking back a little bit so once we have the most full shot with a slight sink mark in it maybe we're calling it 98 percent but in truth in reality we don't really know what it is it could be 95 it could be 96 it could be 90 we don't really know um and we're just stepping back a little bit further by reducing it by one percent and maybe it's to do with when we set remove the holding pressure altogether and the holding time the way the machine ramps down from the switch over pressure down to zero it won't do that when we set it as a holding pressure maybe five or six hundred bar so it'll ramp down from the top maybe a 1200 down to 900 and the switch over is kind of happening at a slightly different time so maybe it's taking account of that one percent um however it did it, it, it is a good way like i say if you are in a hurry and you need to find a switch over position now a better way i think of doing it and it takes a little bit more time but having said that i think it's time well spent and it's not that difficult really so here on the y-axis we have the well the shot size but we're just taking it um, a plasticizing stroke so we're going to vary the plasticizing stroke and get different shot sizes so this is a linear measurement 28 29 30 millimeters um, and every time we change the, the plasticizing and the shot size we're going to run the machine we're going to mold some fill only parts so again no holding pressure no holding time and we're going to mold parts and then we're going to weigh the parts so we may mold three four cycles um, shots and weigh those shots we're going to get an average calculate an average weight of that and just plot it so the part weight on the y-axis so we plot that point there um, and I'll just try and draw that there. So we're going to plot that point there. Um, okay. And we do that just again for different plasticizing strokes or different shot sizes. And we just simply mold three or four, take an average weight of them and plot that weight. And we do that for several different and positions on the screw position for the plasticizing so that we're building up a shot that kind of we might start maybe down here where okay the part is it's got some shorts in it or it's got some sink marks in it we don't know exactly the percentage full but we we take it it's somewhere maybe around 90 percent or so we could start there and once we've started there then we just start to increase the shot size increase the plasticizing stroke and then at each time we're molding a few samples we're measuring an average and what we're really trying to do is plot this curve quite simple all it is is the shot size essentially on the, on the uh, x-axis and then the y-axis we're measuring the part weight and what we should find and what we, you'll find is that at some point this graph begins to level off we don't get so much of an increase in the part weight so that down here we're getting a significant we're getting a, a large increase in the shot weight you know we've increased it there by 0.15 of a gram and um, and so on but as we step from once we start to pack out the part we're getting less and less and less of an increase in the weight and um, so that's telling me the part is full the part is full up here so what else can we say about that well we could say up here we're going to call this 100 percent full we're going to say there 2.51 100 percent full the part is 100 percent full now let's look maybe multiply that by 0.98 and get what 98% full is. So 98% full, 
we may say, okay, it's there. That's 98% full. And where is 95% full? Well, multiply our 100% full weight by 0.95. We could say, right, well, that's our 95% full. So what we're going to do then is just simply put a box around this area here and say, okay, this is where we want to be switching over our shot. We want to switch over in there. Now, I hear you say, well, Column, whereabouts in there? Well, by the way, if you're finding some value or useful information in this, would you mind hitting that like and subscribe button, the bell icon there, and I'll update you when I release more videos like this. Um, it also just helps get this information out to other people who are interested in this kind of topic. So now that we know where our 95, 98% full shot is, we might be asking ourselves, well, okay, we're 29.5 or 31 millimeters um, on the plasticizing stroke. So where should I switch over? Well, that depends. That depends on the part. For example, if you have a thin wall part, thin wall, I'd say less than one millimeter. If you have a thin wall part, once you switch over to holding, which is a lower pressure, you're really not, you may not be pushing a lot of material in there. So, so as to compensate for any shrinkage in the mold, you may consider filling the mold to 98% full. Also, if you have very small gates, you might consider switching over at 98% full and being able to completely fill the part and pack out the part. Because if the gates are very small, the freeze time, it's going to freeze very quickly. So you need to inject as much material up until nearly 100% and then use whatever packing you have to pack out that part. Alternatively, if the part is a thick wall section and you want to get more pressure in there, or if you have big gates and it doesn't freeze off so quick, you may want to switch over at a lower percentage, maybe 95% down here. Or if you have a lot of imbalance in your tool, if you have a multi-cavity tool and you have some parts that are filling first and then other parts are filling later um, and there's a significant difference, you may want to try and switch over earlier so that the most full part isn't quite full yet. And then you're gonna use the packing stage to pack the parts fill the parts, but also fill them at an even pressure. So it kind of depends on your mold, your parts and what way, but somewhere between 95 and 98%. And it's a great way to be able to use this graph to visually show where that 95, 98% is. It also cuts out a lot of arguments and discussions and um, chatter around the switch over position and if we're over pressurizing or over filling our molds. Having a graph like that and pinpointing exactly on that graph cuts out a lot of needless discussions. Now, finally, let's talk about pressure. So as we fill the part, as we put more volume into the mold, the pressure, which is on the y-axis here, begins to increase. So we have the barrel pressure here on the y-axis. And then again, we have the plasticizing stroke um, and shot size. As we increase the plasticizing stroke, we're increasing the shot size. Um, so we, we've already identified where 90, well, 90, 95% and 98% full is in this green area. I'm gonna call this the, switch over area. Um, so we've identified that switch over area and you could say we've identified what's outside that too, too, uh, too low of a percentage and over 100% so too high. But you can see as we go into 100% the, the pressure keeps on continuing. We can't really tell if there's a deflection. Okay, you might think, okay, I get to 100%, 
the pressure is going to go sky high. Not necessarily, not always, at least in my experience. Um, it, it just kind of keeps continuing on with that 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 gradual that line as such um, of pressure increase with the shot size. But what we can tell with this is the point. So we can tell that point there, and we can tell that point there uh, where we're at 95 and 98, and we can tell the pressure then there as well. So we can just graph over to here and so, okay i'm going to have to reduce that we can graph that over over to this point okay and we'll say 2000 2000 bar we're hitting 95 percent and if we go up to 2100 we're at 98 percent so this might be a nice way to switch over on pressure and it may be a more accurate way for you to switch over, especially with multi-cavity molds. Now, likewise with that, um, if you have in-mold sensors, that's actual sensors in your mold, it's great to be able to know where my 95% is, where I'm 95% full, and where I'm 98% full. And then uh, again, plotting the the pressure of the, the in-mold sensor and knowing what pressures I need to switch over at. And again, that might be even a more accurate way of in-mold switching over at the pressure. So the pressure is always going to be that pressure in the cavity when you switch over. And um, especially transferring tools from one mold, one machine into another machine, um, a better way to do that. Okay, so I do run a course on this where we look at how to set up the molding machine correctly. And we, we talk a little bit more about graphs and how to read and interpret graphs on your molding machine and in mold as well. So there's links below if you're interested in that. Um, Okay, so we've talked about setting the switch over position and, and setting the shot size for your molding machine here in this video. I hope you got some value in it. And as always, if you have any questions, you can contact me. I'll leave my contact below in the details. Okay, till next time, stay safe.